Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This passage from Isaiah sets the tone for our meditation today. The lessons celebrate growth and proclaim God's hope for his creation and the grace and peace that God is willing to give lavishly in love for the sake of the creation. The parable of the sower is one of seven that Jesus tells in Matthew chapter 13 to describe the kingdom of God. It appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke with few variations. According to New Testament scholar Luke Timothy Johnson, it combines the three elements of growth, decision, and judgment. This parable celebrates one of the most overwhelming aspects of God's nature. His extravagant generosity and abundance of grace and love. It is very familiar to all of us and speaks powerfully to us in our day. Biblical scholar Raymond Brown insists that this parable emphasizes the different kinds of obstacles and failures encountered by the proclamation of the kingdom. This was certainly true in Jesus' day, and it continues to be true today. Jesus' life and teaching amidst turbulent and dangerous times in his culture are very familiar to us. So let's look at the parable itself more carefully in the context of our lives today. We easily see the problems in other people and in other countries and cultures, but we need to honestly look within ourselves and our own culture. Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor says, when I read this parable, I start worrying about what kind of ground I am for God. How many birds are in my field? How many rocks? And how many thorns? She also worries about how she can turn herself into a well-tilled, well-weeded, well-fertilized field for the sowing of God's word. God is the sower, and the seed that is sown is the good news of the kingdom. And what about the different types of soil? The path, the rocks, the thorn, and the good soil. What do they represent for us? The path represents those who have heard the message but don't understand it so they reject it. Perhaps they are focused on their busy schedules or uncertainty in their lives, being pulled from place to place so that they really don't listen or take time to study the scriptures and participate in worship opportunities. The rocks represent those who receive the word with joy and delight but are not rooted in their faith. They're excited about the message at first, but as soon as difficult times in their lives come along, like the current pandemic, or other crises like financial problems, they become discouraged. They question their faith and fall away. As for the soil with thorns, this represents those who hear and receive the word, 
But as they go on their way, other things like natural disasters, political divisions, and racism choke and paralyze them. Their fruit does not mature, and their faith becomes barren and dies. It's all too easy to find characters, including ourselves, who illustrate the three unproductive soils. But if we focus on that part of the parable alone, it's not a very hopeful story. Let's remember that the parable ends in joy, celebrating the harvest. If we go beyond the frustrations and failures, we discover a harvest sown on good soil that exceeds all our expectations. In Paul's letter to the Romans, we are reminded that new life has been made available to us, life in the Spirit. His message for us is that we are to live according to the Spirit of God through prayer, study, and serving others. We can become good soil, deep and fertile, which bears fruit and with God's help yields a remarkable harvest. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry writes, we are called to witness to the gospel of God's compassion, justice, and love, even in the midst of the wild, restless sea. I would add, even in the midst of this global pandemic. We are to love and serve in broadcast fashion, trusting in the abundance of the harvest. At our baptisms, we promise to fulfill the baptismal covenant with God's help, to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, and to strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. We are all called to sow seeds of love and grace, justice and mercy. Episcopal priest Tim Taylor gives these words of encouragement. Sowing the word of God is always abundantly worthwhile. We are never to be discouraged by any effort that seems wasted as we seek to witness to God's love. So great is his life-giving power that nothing good can ultimately be lost or fail in time to bear fruit. Each one of us is called to become not only good soil, but also sowers of the word of God. The parable ends with the words, he who has ears, let him hear. For me, the message is that we are not just to listen, but to take the parable to heart and to respond. As the body of Christ, we are challenged to become the hands and feet of our Lord, as Santa Teresa proclaimed sowing the seed indiscriminately to all people to produce God's amazing harvest. May the words of the sonnet, Good Ground, written by Anglican priest and poet, Malcolm White, become our prayer. Let us pray. I love your simple story of the sower with all its close attention to the soil, its movement from the knowledge to the knower, its take on the tenacity of toil. I feel the fall of seed a sower scatters, so equally available to all. Your story takes me straight to all that matters, 
yet understands the reasons why I fall. O deepen me where I am thin and shallow, uproot in me the thistle and the thorn. Keep far from me that swiftly snatching shadow that seizes on your seed to mock and scorn. O break me open, Jesus, set me free. Then find and keep your own good ground in me. Amen. Thank you. 